here we go again. A weather watch alert for more big heat and then big storms. Then a big pattern change. Your full forecast coming up. And a man is dead after being pulled from a Connecticut lake. What happened in the efforts to save him? And a country music star returns to Connecticut and he comes back with some controversy. We'll explain. Fox 61, Connecticut's news station begins with a weather watch alert. We begin tonight with a weather watch alert. More storms are on the way just in time for the weekend. And to make matters worse, the sweltering heat is here to stay until Sunday. Expected to feel well over 90 degrees in parts of the state if you're venturing outside. Thank you so much for joining us for the news at 10. I'm Jen Bernstein and I'm Brent Harden. If today's heat did not make you turn on your air conditioner and surely it must, but if it didn't, you certainly want to want to consider it by daybreak tomorrow in parts of Connecticut today. The heat index creeped uh, pretty close to triple digits and that sweltering heat continues into Saturday and at the same time we're bringing back the possibility of some severe storms. We want to send things right over to chief meteorologist Rachel Frank. Rachel, this July we, we really can't get a break from it. So. Yeah, so what we're really saying is tomorrow is just going to be a typical July day for July 2023. We've got heat, we've got humidity, and once again, like you guys said, another threat for some powerful storms. So what we're talking about here is the chance for some severe weather. There could be an isolated shower or thunderstorm in the morning right around daybreak, but we're not anticipating it to be too strong. The main threat will really be in the afternoon, especially in a window of time between 3 to 9 p.m. Primary threats going to be some low Locally heavy rain, rain that we clearly do not need. It's the wettest July on record, some lightning. So make sure that you have a way of getting weather alerts so you can step inside if those storms head your way. Damaging winds are possible in the strongest storms as well. A heat advisory has been posted for the entire state. It continues right into the day tomorrow for that combination of heat and humidity. And believe it or not, it will actually get even more humid as we head through the day tomorrow. We're watching this area of showers and thunders storms here in parts of Pennsylvania. Some of that might end up clipping us early tomorrow. So overnight tonight, most of us stay dry, but right around daybreak, we'll see temperatures beginning in the 70s. We'll start with the chance for an isolated shower or rumble of thunder. Then midday clouds will break for sunshine that will allow temperatures to soar. And then we'll watch for that increasing thunderstorm threat as we head through the afternoon, especially later in the day and at night when a few of those stronger ones are possible. We'll take a closer look at that. Plus, the big change that will follow this front, it is going to feel completely different when you wake up on Sunday. And it looks like the change might be sticking around. We'll explain coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Sounds good. Uh, all right, hot as it is, though, the heat did not deter or deter fairgoers in Lebanon though they were no doubt trying to find ways to keep cool. Yeah, Lebanon Country Fair is back, and with the storms on the way, people wanted to make the most out of the sunshine tonight. Fox, Fox, Fox 61's Gabby <laughs> Molina was there. She joins us now with how people are staying cool. Gabby. Even after the sun went down, it's still hot and humid, though that's not stopping people from enjoying all of the fair food, the games, the rides, though the heat was certainly hard to ignore. A scorching hot summer day won't keep people from having fun at the Lebanon Fair. It's really nice, a bit too hot sometimes, but it's, it's pretty good for the most part. People in town look forward to this weekend all year long. It's, it's a lot of work that goes into it, but it's a great weekend. With the heat and humidity turned all the way up, people were looking for ways to stay cool. Found this cold cider Found here. Found a cold drink. <laughs> Crisp apple, beautiful. That was pretty much it. Others had the same idea, forming a line for the lemonade stands to quench their thirst. The hotter, the better for us, so some vendors might not agree, but lemonade is always a great seller. It's run by the Lebanon Leo's Club, young volunteers who raise money for the community. On a recent hot weekend, they sold more than 600 cups in four hours at a fair. They're hoping for the same success this weekend. Not only is it the best lemonade on the fair, but it's for the best cause because we donate all of our money back. So none of it stays with us. From ice cold lemonade to ice cream sundaes. It is by far the undisputed world's best sundae. The heat tends to be good for business. I think we're one of the most popular booths here, especially on the real hot days. Elsewhere around the fair, the food is also hot. Hottest chili on the midway! And those behind the grill try their best not to be. We watch each other, make sure everybody's, uh, you know, getting hydrated and, you know, keep a, you know, we really do have to keep an eye on each other. With storms in the forecast this weekend, people were making the most of the sunshine, even if it was a little uncomfortable. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Stay out of the sun, dress not in jeans, you know. 
The Lebanon Fair continues through the weekend. It ends at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. In Lebanon, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Looks like a fun night despite the heat, Gabby. Thank you. And whether it's severe storms or hot temperatures, stay up to date by downloading the free Fox 61 News app. That's where you can find live radar and hour-by-hour -hour forecasts. It's also a great resource for breaking news and traffic conditions all across Connecticut. Well, more charges for DJ Hernandez, the brother of former NFL player Aaron Hernandez. This time, DJ is being charged by the Feds. The U.S. Attorney for Connecticut announced today that Hernandez has been charged with interstate threatening and stalking offenses. Hernandez was arrested just last week. This is body cam footage from Bristol police showing that arrest. He allegedly made shooting threats against the University of Connecticut, which is his alma mater. He's also accused of making those threats against Brown University, the school he formerly worked at as a football coach. Hernandez went before a federal judge in Hartford this afternoon. Well, the search for a missing New London teen was suspended today. Officials say he was swept away in the waters off Westerly, Rhode Island late last night. Officials say a group of teens were playing near the water at Dunes Park Beach when a 15-year-old boy went under the surf. He never came back up. Police utilized everything in their arsenal to try and find him, including boats and helicopters, even dive team members. The search was called off this afternoon, a fact that has the family of that missing teen in the hearts of rescuers. I'm a parent, and, I, and it's absolutely devastating. I mean, it's, it's awful, but I don't think it, has, it hasn't sunk in yet for them yet. The survivability factor uh, decreases dramatically with every uh, moment that passes, obviously. And last night, some very significant weather rolled through the area as well. Now, the Coast Guard says they plan to be out po at uh, Point Judith tomorrow to continue to search for the boy in hopes of recovering his body. We have an update tonight. The man who was pulled from the water at Coventry Lake this afternoon has died. First responders rushed into the water to rescue the 75-year-old man who was said to have been having some sort of medical emergency just after 3 this afternoon. He was pulled out of the water where emergency personnel began giving him CPR before rushing him to the hospital. Police telling us just a little while ago that tragically he did not survive. The identity of that man has not been released. A Stamford pastor remembered tonight, two days after he was fatally struck by a police cruiser. A vigil held this evening for Reverend Tommy Jackson. He was walking back after getting his mail when Stamford police officer Zachary Lockwood hit him with his car. Lockwood was responding to another unrelated call at the time. Officials uh, speaking on how the loss is impacting the entire Stamford community as the search for answers continues. Our community is shaken due to this tragic accident. Commissioner Jackson and her family, Officer Lockwood and his family, and the Stanford community as a whole. Stanford and state police held a press conference today to provide an update on the investigation. They say that every resource is being utilized to determine exactly what happened. Lockwood is on paid administrative leave. The 24-year-old has been with the force since April of last year. A former teacher at Tolland High School has been sentenced to jail time for having a sexual relationship with a former student. This past April, 43-year-old Chris Coffey was arrested for having an inappropriate relationship with a former student back in 2014 and 2015. Police say Coffey, who was an English teacher at Tallinn High School, had sex with that former student in his classroom. Coffey was sentenced to 10 years behind bars. His sentence will be suspended after two years served, where he will then serve 10 years probation. Also sentenced tonight, a former mariachi teacher in Wallingford, 38-year-old Adam Romo, will spend 20 years in prison for sexually abusing two 15-year-old boys over the course of nine months. Court documents showed this happened while he was working as a music teacher. Romo pleaded guilty on two counts of risk of injury to a minor back in May of this year. The abuse is said to have taken place between December 2020 and August of the following year. Well, new at 10 tonight, country music artist Jason Aldean is returning to Hartford this weekend after cutting his last concert earlier this month in the capital city short due to heat exhaustion. However, this time around, Aldean is facing criticism after the release of his music video to his song, Try That in a Small Town. Fox 61's Jake Garcia explains how a Hartford group is hoping to have conversations around the controversy in a different kind of protest. 
Jason Aldean's new music video for his song, Try That in a Small Town, is causing backlash nationwide. Some saying the video has racist undertones. In the video, Aldean performs in front of a Tennessee courthouse, which was the site of a 1920s lynching of an 18-year-old and a 1946 race riot. The video also contained clips of recent Black Lives Matter protests across the country. Those clips have since been edited and removed. Aldean addressing the controversy on Twitter, saying in part, quote, There is not a single lyric in the song that references race or points to it. I can try and respect others to have their own interpretation of a song, but this one goes too far, end quote. Aldean is coming back to Hartford Sunday for another concert after a concert earlier this month had to be cut short because the singer fell ill. This time around, a Hartford group is planning a tailgate party by dressing up in ball gowns. If the way that we come together is through a fight, do we win? So no. So then, you know, when what seems like intolerance comes to town, let's get together and enjoy each other. Let's share conversation over food and snacks and let's tailgate and have a great time. The ball gown theme is based on a viral meme showing Jason Aldean in a gown with the words, try that in a ball gown. Kimura says the tailgate is not a protest, but a way to have fun while having difficult conversations. It is okay and safe and productive to step into the differences rather than the similarities. Step into the differences, learn the differences, then you can truly celebrate the differences, not just talk about celebrate them, but really celebrate them, and then we can move forward. A local artist and DJ writing a song to highlight small towns from a different perspective. But the inspiration behind my song is that you still have good people out there that you meet along the way that's gonna be willing to open the arms toward you. Security is a concern amid the backlash. Hartford police will be at Sunday's concert telling Fox 61 in a statement, quote, we are aware of the events taking place and we will have the event fully staffed. In Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.